you are in here for another prophetic series and the concern here is how to prophesy accurately all the time it's like a continuation of my video on how to activate the forensic prophecy realm so this is like a part two of it in case you're new here subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out of other great videos coming up here don't forget to like this video comment and share to bless others one of the leading questions that you come by in the prophetic circles all the time particularly among teaming prophets even among uh, professionals or semi-professionals is the issue of consistency with prophetic accuracy and that's why this is given attention to how to do forensic prophecy consistently or how to prophesy accurately all the time for most persons or uh, most prophets or prophetic people they can prophesy accurately and this would happen at some time and then not the other time and sometimes these persons are confused what's really the matter why am i not prophesying accurately all the time at uh, some point in time too they try to uh, prophesy the real world but they discover the thing is not forthcoming at all then at another date it's forthcoming with ease there are reasons why this happened i just want to uh, throw light on this and guide you into what it takes to prophesy accurately all the time the first thing to bring to your mind is that there are three stages that you go through in order to prophesy accurately all the time so my approach to this work is on you that's your person rather than on the realms that allows you to prophesy with 100% accuracy. The first concern here, or point here, is the call stage. At this first stage of uh, your engagement with the prophetic or your aspiration or your entrance into uh, the prophetic, you discovered that you probably came into a call or a desire. Yeah, this call in turn could have, uh, uh, may have come in as a result of uh, a revelation you had or a prophecy you received is a stage where you are not allowed to play roles in making you do good prophetically or it doesn't really depend on you it depends on the call and there's a caller god his holy spirit is available to serve you at this stage so he keeps updating you with things that are necessary at this level. You see a lot of visions effortlessly with the night dreams or broad daylight visions. They could be open vision or inner vision. They could be trances, but you don't really press to come into this level. At the same time, you discover that the Spirit of God behind you uh, keeps on locking things for you. Like you're sitting with your neighbor. You're able to see what they're going through. You, you have just received a visitor. You just be able to uh, see or hear what they're going through. That's if you are able to see already, hear already, or as well as you are able to see and uh, perhaps feel in the spirit realm. At this point, it's effortless. It's not as a result of your too many fasting and prayers. It's not as a result of your a deep Bible study. It's not as a result of your profound depth with understanding of the prophetic, but that God wants you to be able to access the prophetic realm so the holy spirit keeps feeding you with issues or prophecies and you begin to pour at this level how be it it's a kind of being spontaneous and uh, it comes sparingly that's the prophecies as county you, you you have a few of them here and a few of them there at this point you are in the prophetic office yet. prophecies here can also be aided by what i call in one of my videos the imaginary realm when we're talking about dimensions of forensic prophecy dimension number one is the imaginary realm this stage here corresponds with that imaginary realm stage remember we're not dealing with realms here we're dealing with you here you the you we have here as a prophetic person whether as an apostle an evangelist or a prophetess whoever you are but you are prophetic uh, in terms of your calling this level of it you are just at a place where you can excite or elicit prophecy by just imagining something and you begin to see effortlessly. From this point, please, if you find yourself here, the prophecies are going to be scanty. You are not yet in the prophetic office. And so you're trying to do things that people in the prophetic office do, you will not be able to do. That's why when you come to meetings, you discover that you are running short of prophecies. It's just like you are by the riverbank and, uh, you know, 
the first depth of the river can may just be uh, enough to to take your arm to the wrist if you are to dip it this way into the water it will just be to the uh, wrist or maybe let me say you step in with your leg just above the ankle joint at this point you can swim it now we're moving to the next phase or next stage the next stage is what i call the the adaptation stage it corresponds with ezekiel's uh, vision of the temple in which the angel of the lord that stood by him measured a thousand cubit and the prophet said i stepped in and the water was by my ankle joint he said the angel of the lord went further measured again another one thousand feet he said when i went inside this time the water came to my kneel joint this kneel joint level of the prophetic anointing is what i call the adaptation stage in the adaptation stage i'll give you again another a wonderful uh, analogy that will help you and it is that of the eagle you see when a mother eagle the fire cone gives birth to the eaglets or hatches the eaglets rather initially like in stage number one where we talked about the core stage you discover that the falcon will go about bringing all the meal to the eaglets in the nets and the eaglet doesn't go out to do any of those like seeking for what eat over time in stage number two of the development of the eaglet you discover that the falcon will pick the eaglet now trying to fade out and fly to a very high uh, altitude and then leave the eaglet in the air and the eaglet will begin to roll and begin to you know try to fight or struggle with the uh, air to, uh, kind of trying to uh, gain stamina in the air all the falcon is trying to do is to teach the eaglet how to fly that's the goal this is what it means to fly this is what to do to fly and when the eaglet is in the business of struggling with the air struggling how to maintain stamina and uh, be able to uh, escape so that it doesn't smash on the ground and eventually dies the falcon will come from below and pick it picks it up right in the air still in the air begs the eaglet takes the eaglet again to another high altitude, release the eaglet, and the processes will keep uh, being repeated. It's very rough on eaglet. It's very frightening. You know, all hope can be lost here. Even so, in the prophetic journey, the second stage, which is the adaptation stage, is like the Holy Spirit have withdrawn from you. You see things today, you don't see tomorrow. And even when you see things, they are not coming entirely clear. And some of them are leaving you with conditions that are dangerous, that are of a high risk for yourself and for your ministry. Even while you are doing the separation of yourself to pray, you will discover that it is still not easy because other pressures will be coming on you from other, other sphere of life, like in personal responsibility or family responsibility or ministerial responsibility and lots more. This stage, the Holy Spirit doesn't entirely do things for you. Even when you pray and you're expecting favor, it doesn't come. God himself will pull people away from you and leave you there so that you keep struggling like the eaglet struggles in the air to maintain stamina. All God is doing is to bring you to a place or a point in life in ministry or in the prophetic uh, journey in which you are able to gain stamina, adapt and be able to, you know, interact with the prophetic realm and from the prophetic realm are able to control things that happen in your life. Take charge of your life and ministry so that over time you would be the one that is directing things to happen for you prophetically. But it's a tedious stage. It's a stage on the journey. Nothing is wrong with you. That's the secret I want to tell you here. Nothing is wrong with you. At the same time, during this stage, you need to seek for the right uh, depth of what it takes, the house, A to Z, on what it takes to prophesy at the forensic level and consistently. Beyond what I'm telling you here, there are systematics that you will be taught. There are details that you will be told that cannot be contained in a brief video like this. You must pay the price, whatever it is, to aspire to be trained at this point. Every prophet, great prophet you see, was trained. The man Apostle Peter was or saw himself in this stage number two. When he was in stage number one, he went to the mountain of transfiguration effortlessly. He saw Elijah and Moses effortlessly. 
He watched Jesus transfigured before him effortlessly. That's in stage number one, the cold stage. But in stage number two, Jesus was crucified. And Peter and the rest of the apostles were alone. And now Peter told them, I'll go fishing. Get it? Things have changed. The thing is not happening as it used to be again. So Peter had to think or remember that he had once been a fisherman and he could raise money through fishing. So he had to go back to fishing before Jesus came to pick him up again. Just as the mother eagle, you know, comes back to pick the eaglets, lest the eaglet smashes on the ground. <laughs> Get that? Jesus left him off, off, and Peter struggled there, and he went back fishing. Then Jesus came and picked him up again, took him up back into the, into the orbit to release him to struggle again to gain stamina. This thing is like that with every prophet. We can, you know, do this analysis over and over. The sharpest prophets of the contemporary time, all trained, like Daniel. The moment he came into Babylon, he was in the stage number two of this thing. That was when he went in training. That was when he was intense work with his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in building themselves up to be spiritually capable or competent, and then with uh, possessing the required stamina to navigate their paths in the prophetic realm, and uh, to become these forensic, as we have Daniel's prophetic records or exploits or excerpts, uh, to be a forensic today he is about one of the greatest of uh, prophets on forensic prophecy ever known in history detailing everything about the rapture detailing everything about pre-rapture issues and post-rapture issues daniel is a guru in the prophetic uh, faculty and he passed through this stage so you don't rush yourself out of this stage you don't think it's just about praying and fasting and you go there no somebody have to tell you a secret that is required to have your eyes opened and consistently there's a secret about this somebody need to tell you what it takes to have your ears open and consistently somebody need to tell you what it takes to have God repeatedly come and talk to you and somebody need to tell you the secrets there is regarding why sometimes the prophecies we pass out are not from God there are prophecies that are from the prophet because he's made you a prophet and the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So the prophet can interact with certain things on behalf of God and give prophecies and they are accurate. And God goes ahead to either endorse or God leaves his prophecies as they are, depending on the case, because they are a prophet owns a franchise of the prophetic realm, Buffett, as a heritage. These are tactics that you must be taught or brought up before you can be rooted in the place or office where you are able to prophesy at 100 with 100 percent accuracy and all the time lastly is the float stage there is a stage that i call the float stage this stage corresponds with in the uh, dimensions of forensic prophecy the community subrame of forensic prophecy that is where the float stage uh, fits in in the float stage of the person called the prophet you are able now to prophesy effortlessly not because the holy spirit is doing everything for you but because you as a prophet like a mother ego is now able to understand the uh, air the atmosphere where you are able to only spray your wing and allow the uh, the air to carry you like the eagle they don't really flap their wings they just spread out there even in storms they just spread out there when storms come all other birds are afraid but when storms come eagle just spread their wings so prophets at the float stage don't struggle to prophesy not because the holy spirit is doing everything for them but because they have now come to the place where they've gained stamina it's as a result of the mastery they came back with from stage number two where we talked about adaptation it is here that you can prophesy on volition these people here are in the prof prophetic office these people here are in commun the community sovereign of forensic prophecy where prophecy is a forensic prophecy is the order of the day. The realm here is clearer to them, more real to them, and they are more in touch with this realm than the physical realm that you and I, or, or, uh, that we operate in, you, uh, or you and I know about. That's what I'm trying to say. 
So to get to this realm is what you're, is required so that you can prophesy accurately and consistently everything there is to bring you here. Before you come to this realm, you can prophesy accurately, consistently, or prophesy accurately, or at a forensic level, and all the time. So it's a journey for the person of the prophet. Yeah. And this journey eventually brings you to that realm. I'll put it this way. There was a time when Wilbur Novile wanted to produce the first aircraft. These were the inventors of aircrafts, sons of Bishop Wright in the United States. There's something about them I want to use to give you an illustration here. At the initial stage, they developed their primitive aircraft. They attempted to fly. Of course, they fantasized it. That corresponds with the core stage. They fantasized it. They saw themselves flying. They saw the thing working and the visions or, uh, or yeah, the vision or the dream kept coming, kept coming, kept coming like that. This stage of the uh, development of the aircraft it corresponds with stage number one, that's the call stage. In stage number two of the uh, work on the aircraft, they tried to fly, but they kept, you know, crashing. And at the point, uh, Wilbur came back saying that man may not be able to fly for the next 100 years. Out of frustration, you get that. That's not quite long from that time. Wilbur and Ovilo went out again to try out. And this time around, they were able to fly for 200 feet. This was the time they knew we have won the flight theory stuff. And they came back and registered the appurtenancy of the aircraft. The stage number three where we were able to fly, you know, for 200 feet corresponds to the time they, they had discovered the aircraft proper. And then it returned back and turned to Charles, who happened to be a staff in the company. And he produced for them an engine that could serve them. As for the flight stuff, they had conquered it. When they went back to the air, they were able to maneuver through the air. Wilbur flew, Ovile flew, and they became the first aircraft instructors. The point here is this. They came to a float stage. At the, in the long run, at the end of the day, they came to a float stage. But look at the struggle. In that stage number two, where they were trying to fly, each time they attempted, they crashed helplessly. So in prophecy two, you attempt to fly. In stage number two, you crash. But this is the face that actually beats you, okay? In stage number three, you float. And you keep floating. This is the stage where stamina is going and you have been launched to a particular realm and you are already in the prophetic office. We guide you step to step in this uh, on what it takes to bring you to this stage. This cannot be done in a single small video of this nature. I decree and I declare that the Lord God whom I serve who called me into the prophetic release upon you everything it takes to have your eyes unlocked to be able to prophesy at a forensic level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.